action. All right. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to another video. This video is about the Atlanta Falcons, the Rise Up motto, the Brotherhood motto, where it all comes from, why the Atlanta Falcons are even in the Super Bowl to begin with, which by my last calculations, it looks like it's the first ever overtime for a Super Bowl. The New England Patriots came back and tied the game up to send the game into overtime as Atlanta was blowing them out most of the game. You know, of course, of course, proving once ever more how sports, the NFL especially, is rigged. You know, we got Tom Brady, his fifth Super Bowl. Actually, I'm sorry, seventh Super Bowl. Possible fifth win. Most yards ever thrown in a Super Bowl by a quarterback. Now we get the first ever overtime. So, just interesting how all these, these things play out. But we're talking about Atlanta and rising up. And what is rising up? Where do they get this motto from? Well, I'm not from Atlanta, I'm not from Georgia, but doing some research into this. In 1864, during the Civil War, Atlanta, Georgia was burned down to the ground. And then in 1865, Atlanta rose from the ashes. The phoenix rose from the ashes. And that's where the motto, Resurgence, comes from. If you look around the city of Atlanta, like I believe it's on the uh, Andrew, what's the guy's name? Andrew Young Building it, uh, for Georgia State in downtown Atlanta. He has what's called the... Uh, it's the phoenix rising from the ashes, and it says above it, resurgence, and then it says, you know, the dates of 1847 and the dates of 1865, which 1865 will be the year that Atlanta rose from the ashes, so to speak. So, the symbol for Atlanta is a phoenix rising from the ashes. Now... I'm sure we have a pretty good idea for those for those of you who've studied like the New World Order, um, the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast, you know, Illuminati, this, that, and the other. You're aware of the Phoenix, the symbol of the Phoenix, and how that symbol of the Phoenix represents rebirth, resurrection, you know, rising from the ashes, rising up. And we see that with Atlanta, their logo is a falcon, which could be another uh, representation of the phoenix. So, uh, just to kind of give a little information here from, I think this is the Latham Latham'sQuarterly.org, it was an article they had about Atlanta and about the resurgence. This was from June of 2016. Because Atlanta recently, uh, in 2014, they did the 150th anniversary to commemorate the burning of Atlanta. They made t-shirts, etc. And um, just a, a little interesting side notes about the city of Atlanta. This is where The Walking Dead is filmed. Oh, the area, the Atlanta area. That's where The Walking Dead is filmed. It's uh, considered Black Hollywood. The CDC is in Atlanta. We have CNN and Turner, uh, you know, Ted Turner, his network of of different channels which promote their propaganda you know the weather channel uh, CNN TNN 
or used to be TNN, I don't know if it still exists, TBS, uh, you know, the Weather Channel, Cartoon Network, and many other channels that, that push a lot of propaganda. Um, Atlanta, you know, is obviously home to the Falcons and the Hawks and the Braves. The Falcons and the Braves both are getting, uh, are having new stadiums completed right now as we speak, which is one of the main reasons Atlanta is able to host the Super Bowl in two years because of the fact that they have a new stadium. So the Georgia Dome will be coming down eventually here and the new stadium will be finished being erected, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which I'll be showing kind of like a video, a video clip of that stadium and the uh, simulated, like a, it's like a simulated video that Mercedes and the Atlanta Falcons uploaded on their YouTube channels in regards to like what the stadium is basically going to look like. And it's actually, it's interesting, it has a retractable roof on the top of it where when it's closed it has the Mercedes logo, but when it's opening it's like an eight-pointed star up top, kind of like the uh, the star, the sun of Isis or, or Ishtar. You could say and it looks like um, the New England Patriots just scored and that's the game 
New England just beat Atlanta in the Super Bowl. I'm actually surprised. I really thought Atlanta was going to win. But New England ble beat the Falcons. And that's it. This one is in the history books. I'm really surprised. Um, I'm, not, I'm not surprised, but I am only because of all the, uh, the build up to it. It kind of took the life out of people's uh, out of people's chests. You know, I've been just kind of paying attention to all the different churches, as I'm going to get into on this video, all the different churches in the Atlanta area and even across the United States who've really been giving a lot of attention to the Super Bowl and, and just, uh, you know, uploading, you know, uploading different pictures and different videos, um, just kind of letting it be known like yeah we're going to we're going to be participating in this today with our church services you know wear your favorite team jerseys um, you know several other other different uh, things you know uh, so-called pastors making videos uploading them being very obnoxious uh, you know and and just uh, really really showing who, who's really being worshipped here so I don't want to digress too much, but I just wanted to kind of lay a foundation of what the video is going to be about, what it's going to be talking about, and uh, some things you can expect in it. So yeah, we had Atlanta being burned down in 1864, and it rose from the ashes in 1865. That's resurgence, you know, and we see that, um, as I'll be putting some pictures in here, that while I'm talking, that like the Atlanta Police Department, the Fire Department, they have that on their patch, like on their uniforms, um, with the falcon or the phoenix rising from the ashes, and it says resurgence on it. And we see like there's different, um, I think like water meters or whatever around the town. And again, like on the Andrew Young building for Georgia State, you know, it has the phoenix rising from the ashes, and it looks like the phoenix, uh, because of this game, it looks like the Phoenix isn't fully rising from the ashes yet. Atlanta ended up losing. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna kinda just put it on here a little bit. I'm not probably gonna put the volume on. I'll just leave it muted because I don't really care. But the Patriots beat the Falcons. So it looks like the, the proverbial Democrats lost to the Republicans because I've been seeing a lot of conjecture, you know, the Patriots represent like the, De uh, the Republicans and the Falcons, they kind of represent like the Democrats, the civil rights movement, um, you know, white versus black kind of thing. You know, um, I mean, Santa Fe is so rigged, sports is so rigged, it's so obvious. I mean, they come back, it was 28 to three and they come back and win 34 to 28 in overtime. They already have Super Bowl champion banners made. Of course, they always make them ahead of time. And then whichever team wins, you know, then obviously they let them be released. And then whichever team loses, they'll send the shirts and the jerseys and the hats and whatever else they made. They'll send it down to third world countries because in those third world countries, they don't know. They don't care. It's just a, it's just clothing to them. So they don't know or even really have access to knowing of who won the Super Bowl and if it really even matters. But... Yep, they went. They they ended up winning. So, who cares? Good. Um, just wanted to give a quick, brief history on the the creator of modern American football, Walter Camp. I'm not sure if anybody's aware of this uh, in regards to Walter Camp, but we see in his early years. Um, at Yale University, he was a member of Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity, the Lyononian Society, and Skull and Bones. Yes, the creator of modern American football was a Skull and Bones member. So it's no coincidence at the beginning of the game today, they had a Skull and Bones member George H.W. Bush, wheelchair and all, come out and flip the coin for the game. I just really wanted to add that in there. But, so the foundation of modern American football, the father of American football, 
the skull and bones. I don't think it will be too far-fetched to say that it was created, obviously, for the intention and the motivation of keeping people distracted. You know, bread and circuses, as we've heard it um, labeled before. And that's exactly what it is. It's all bread and circuses. It's all a bread and circus show. Same thing every year. Every year. Just maybe different people or different names or a different place or just whatever. But it's always the same thing. And then tomorrow, all the shows are going to be talking about it. You know, even the videos. You know, even I made a video. Um, the Pizza Hut. George Taki Pizzagate video, but you're gonna, you know, they're already uploaded, you know, the the Illuminati exposed Lady Gaga halftime shows, those videos are already uploaded, and there'll be more, um, there'll be more videos, Zachary Hubbard's gonna have his videos, and he's gonna say, oh, how he predicted it was gonna be the Patriots to win, and he's gonna show and use all sorts of gematria to prove it, but truth be told, um, that's not really what this video is going to be about. This video is going to be about why they use the phrase and motto, rise up, and also brotherhood. And basically showing, I'm going to show how this whole phoenix rising from the ashes and the whole rising up uh, motto is actually... Um, to discredit or be like counterfeit with the word of God because there's actually in some circles they even say that Christianity has a uh, has like a belief in this whole phoenix rising from the ashes and also with the rising up um, it also made me think about the kundalini the kundalini uh, the serpent rising up through the spine and hitting every single chakra point until it hits the pineal gland and then, you know, gives like full enlightenment, a spiritual enlightenment and, and an awakening, you could say, with that serpent rising. So it's just another little facet or addition to the whole rising up. So with the phoenix, and we've seen this theme, uh, we've seen this theme throughout the years. We've seen it at the 2012 Olympics.
guess you could say like the closing ceremony was about the Phoenix Rising. Also the 2014 Eurovision Awards, they had this uh, transgender person uh, going by the name of Conchita Wurst. I know many of you are already familiar with that video, the whole bearded lady guy. He's actually a man, but he you know has a beard, but he tries to make himself look like a woman. Uh, people have also said he he's trying to resemble what people uh, have pictured in their mind Christ looking like because of, for instance, what we've uh, seen depicted by the Catholic Church with Caesar, what's his name, uh, Caesar Borgaria, or however you say it, or, or whatever, or however you say that, but... Um, So we've seen uh, the Phoenix rising really being a theme pushed throughout the last several years. We also seen that they came out with a, a movie which was already for the book Harry Potter, The Order of the Phoenix, which I'll be including a clip of that in this video.
Professor. Sir, your bird. There was nothing I could do. He, he just caught fire. Oh, and about time, too. He's been looking dreadful for days. Pity you had to see him on a burning day. Fox is a phoenix, Harry. They burst into flame when it is time for them to die. And then they are reborn from the ashes. Ah, fascinating creatures, phoenixes. They can carry immensely heavy loads and their, their tears of healing parts. Folks. So this is what Dumbledore sends his great defender. A songbird and an old hat. Follow the chamber, and you'll find Ron. You were brilliant, Fawkes. I just wasn't quick enough. Just kind of really describing the, the they say the mythological creature of the phoenix um, but it actually you know there is some legitimacy behind it also in this video I'm gonna show how the economist magazine in 1988 you could say in a sense predicted that there would be a world currency by 2018 and it was depicting a phoenix uh, just wanted to kind of I'll show that, but I might just include a picture of it anyways, just so you can see it. For those of you who haven't already seen this, I'm sure many of you may have, but... Um, not sure if I can enlarge this or not, but... But on there, if you look closely, it has the date of 2018 on the coin. If you can see that, it says 10 Phoenix and the coin is 2018. And it's showing like dollar bills um, and other, other world currency, other currency that's being used in the world. It shows that currency being burned and of course the phoenix rising from the ashes of that currency which is basically what it's all about with the whole new world order order out of chaos it's 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 the whole I mean that's what the whole uh, premise is 
just order out of chaos, you know, so they can institute a new world order. And I know a lot of people, oh, it's conspiracies, conspiracies. Well, you know, conspiracy theories, it's not a theory that this is going to happen because we know for that to happen, you know, we know when it happens, it's going to be a fulfillment of the mark of the beast, you know, the beast system, Revelation 13. These things are going to come to pass. It's just, um, it's just a matter of when, not a matter of if. So, Phoenix rising from the ashes. So I want to kind of just, if you're not aware, kind of give you a brief history of what this is about. So I'm just using Wikipedia, whatever. I mean, there's some truth to it. And in Greek mythology, a phoenix is a long-lived bird that is cyclically, cyclically regenerated or reborn, associated with the sun, hence the Malachi 4 scripture we'll get to. A phoenix obtains new life by arising from the ashes of its predecessor. According to some sources, the phoenix dies in a show of flames and combustion, although there are other sources that claim that the legendary bird dies and simply decomposes before being born again. According to some texts, the phoenix could live over 1,400 years before rebirth. Herodotus, Lucan, Lucian, I would say that, Pliny the Elder, Pope Clement the uh, First, Lactantius, Ovid, and Isidore of Seville are among those who have contributed to the retelling and transmission of the phoenix motif. Now, this is where it gets a little stupid, and I definitely don't agree with this because I think it's blasphemy, but I'm going to read it. In the historical record, the phoenix could symbolize renewal in general, as well as the sun, time, the empire, metapsychosis, consecration, resurrection, life in the heavenly paradise, Christ, Mary, virginity, the exceptional man, and certain aspects of Christian life. Yeah, I definitely don't agree with that. Especially when we go to the uh, origin of the phoenix. It says, classical discourse on the subject of the phoenix points to a potential origin of the phoenix in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? Hmm. Kind of like Horus. Interesting. Interesting. You know, I just want to mention this. This may not be, this video may not be fully concise, but I'm going to do my best to kind of give as much brief overview and information as I can. I've been kind of studying this out for the last little bit, and I really want to get this uploaded. <laughs> just, and I also, so that, that's just kind of a brief, brief uh, discussion about the phoenix, the phoenix bird. Um, I don't really do the whole gematria thing, but for those of you who are into it, just to kind of prove a point, the last time the Atlanta Falcons were in the Super Bowl, it was Super Bowl 33, and they lost against the Broncos. Interesting note there. And Atlanta in Gematria equates to 69. This is like just kind of like a basic standard Gematria where you do it per letter. 69, 6 plus 9 is 15, and 15 equals 6. Falcons in Gematria is 70. 
and then we have a six from the Atlanta and the seven from the Falcons, six plus seven equals 13. ATL equals 33. Just thought I would throw that in there. Uh, Martin Luther King, who is from Atlanta, they actually have a statue of Martin Luther King at Morehouse University, uh, right near a phallic symbol at Morehouse University. Just thought I would include that. Martin Luther King, or I should say MLK, equals 36, 36, 666. The Phoenix can also, as I mentioned, um, represent resurrection. It really represents Lucifer, Satan, or the Christ, the false Christ, the Antichrist. Atlanta also represents and gets its name from like the Atlantic Ocean and especially Atlantis. And back to the number 33, just some special notes on the number 33. Georgia is on the 33rd degree parallel, especially the Georgia Guidestones. And what else? Uh, KKK equals 33. K, the 11th letter, 11, 11, 11 equals 33. Interesting. And again, you know, Falcons were in Super Bowl 33. And 33, we know about the 33rd degree Mason. And I'm going to obviously tie in uh, Masonry into all this. And how the Mason, how Masonry ties into the Phoenix. And how Masonry ties into Manly P. Hall, who wrote a book called The Phoenix. Who Manly P. Hall was a Freemason and a Rosicrucian. And what um, exactly Manly P. Hall had to say in regards to the Phoenix. It's got a little bit of information here. You know, I also believe Atlantis, aka Atlanta, I believe also ties into the Bermuda Triangle and how whenever, whenever uh, airplanes and other ships or crafts or whatever fly or sail into the Bermuda Triangle, how they end up getting lost. I do believe Atlantis, as they say, mythological Atlantis, I do believe Atlantis was a real place and still may be, um, especially prior to the uh, flood that we see in the book of Genesis. I think they, I think they call it what the antediluvian world, so to speak. I definitely believe Atlantis was real. Do your own research and study on Atlantis, but I definitely believe Atlantis was real and that definitely has a lot to do with the uh, with Atlanta and where Atlanta got its name from. There's actually a plumbing company in Atlanta called Atlantis Plumbing. Just found that kind of interesting. Um, also with Atlantis and how it ties to Atlanta and rising up, we have in the book of Revelation 13.1, we, this is, this is, very interesting. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Upon his heads. Again, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So we saw a beast rise up out of the sea. I want to just kind of highlight this for you.
think that can be seen. Oops. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up. Now, we know that a lot of Revelation, if not all of Revelation, is symbolic. It's not literal. So, are we actually going to literally see a beast rise up from Atlantis or from the sea? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I still haven't fully determined exactly how to interpret all of Revelation and a lot of the books of the prophets when it talks about the end times. Eschatology is definitely a very difficult area of study because it's things that are yet to happen. But I just find it interesting, again, the, the whole beast rising up. So... I just kind of wanted to share that. You see it. So we have a beast rising up. And little by little, I'll fill some of these uh, points in different situations in um, throughout this video. There may be some breaks, there may be some uh, brief points, and so on and so forth. One thing I did want to cover as well, going back to the Phoenix and Freemasonry in Manly P. Hall, So, we said Manly P. Hall. Um, I have a quote in here somewhere from him. I believe I have it on here. If not, I'm going to have to find it again. Yeah, I can think this is it. But, I'll show you the book he wrote. see that but this is the book Manly P. Hall Manly P. Hall wrote called The Phoenix and no the P in Manly P. Hall does not stand for Phoenix it actually stands for Palmer but I find that kind of interesting let's see and there's another copy of it Uh, here's one. Uh, here's one quote Manly P. Hall had to say about it. These were the immortals to whom the term phoenix was applied, and their symbol was the mysterious two-headed bird, now called an eagle, a familiar and little understood Masonic emblem. That's Manly P. Hall from the Lost Keys of Freemasonry, which we know that that is on the dollar bill. That phoenix symbol with all the hidden code symbolism on the dollar bill. And we also know 32, the 32nd and also 33rd degree masonry, they use that double-headed bird. Some say it's an eagle, but it's actually the phoenix. So once again, we see the phoenix is directly tied to Freemasonry. The phoenix rising up is tied directly to Freemasonry. Now... Where am I going with all this? Well, going back to Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, Georgia, this whole area. You know, we're talking about the Bible Belt. And just from my 
going on two years of living in the Atlanta area. It's it's steeped. It's deep. It's it's horrible how bad Freemasonry is down here, and especially in a lot of these churches. A lot of these churches are steeped in Freemasonry. Uh, you see Masonic temples all over the place. You see in all these various different cars and traffic. You know, people having the, the Shriner logo and the Freemason logo and the Eastern Star logos on their vehicles. I mean, they're loud and proud about it on their license plates. And so on and so forth. In Mableton, Mableton, Georgia, there's a huge, huge Freemasonic Free Masonic logo they have. And uh, let me see if I can pull it up. I didn't actually, I meant to download that one also. But uh, let me just pull that up right quick, see if it shows up. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna. I don't think there's any pictures of it. I knew I should have took a picture of it because I've driven by it several times. But yeah, I'm not actually seeing one on here. But it's huge. It's it's a huge logo. Huge logo. Well, here's kind of. But that still doesn't show the logo. It's actually like it's not on the building. It's actually off of the building, but. It's big. It's crazy. I actually got a Facebook page. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. The represent oh, there it is on their Facebook page. Oh, I don't know if I can zoom in on this, but oh, there it is. That's, that's on the Mableton, Georgia Freemasonic Lodge. That's their huge, huge logo out front. And it's actually, it looks like it's one, two, three. So it's three, it's done three times. Interesting, kind of a triune effect. But I just seen on here that they're uh, also celebrating, let me see here. I don't know if it's just Freemasonry, but we see here uh, Terra Centennial. Um, which is the 300th anniversary of an event, Tricentennial. So I guess they're representing 300 years of Freemasonry. I don't know where because, but anyway, so uh, it says three centuries of light. <laughs> yeah, false light, Luciferian light. It definitely isn't the light of Christ. So that's the Freemasonic Lodge in Mableton, Georgia. Which Mableton is, you know, probably like five, ten minutes from Atlanta. I mean, it's like right there. I mean, every, everything's like you blink and you're in the next city around here, you know, because it's so spread out. It's so it's so overpopulated to say the least. But so we know with Freemasonry, it's considered a brotherhood. They consider it a brotherhood, or, e or even within fraternities, whether it's a male or female fraternity, you know, they got brotherhood or sisterhood. It's all about that, that bond, you know, and that's been one of the huge, uh, what, what would you call it, another, another motto or uh, catchphrase they've been pushing in this whole Atlanta Falcons. In this whole Atlanta Falcons, uh, season and this is so much let me see if I can uh, find a picture I mean there's several of them but the one in particular I want to show like see we see right here in Brotherhood and it's in the this is in the black and white and I'm going to show you where they get this from. And then we have this wonderful picture in the Brotherhood. 
And would you look at that? One eye symbolism. Oh shoot, sorry. We got the one eye symbolism. I don't know why that keeps going off. We have the one eye symbolism, and it says in brotherhood. And we got the black and white theme going once again, which we know is very symbolic of the Freemasons. And again, some of these pictures I may just include in the video once I get done editing it. Um, like here. Like I'll probably include this one, the Resurgence of Atlanta and their logo. But there was a couple other brotherhoods I wanted to show. Just kind of really proving the point on all this whole in brotherhood concept they got going and then uh, a little bit here I'll get to uh, Instagram and just all the the fun on Instagram I'm sure some people are probably a little more quiet now like some of the false teachers I've been seeing on there promoting their smut like here we got this uh, Masonic Brotherhood and let's see Not sure. There we go. This one. Look at that. And notice how it's got the uh, part of it in the white, just like the in the Brotherhood for the Atlanta Falcons. That's because it is worldwide. There's some scriptures. Uh, there's some scriptures in regards to. Uh, I believe it's kind of, it seems like it could be talking about masonry and how it, uh, how the principles of masonry actually apply to being against Christianity. Um, here we got this, light has come into the world, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., strength to love, 1963. Hmm, so Freemasons are representing Martin Luther King, huh? Interesting, I wonder why. Here we got the Shriner Brotherhood. I'm not sure what the E stands for, but I know what typically, is. the A is Ancient Arabic Order of the Noble Mystic Shrines, but I'm not sure what that E stands for. Again, the same Martin Luther King Jr. quote. See how he kind of ties into all this. Because once again, like I said, at Morehouse College, which you know what, I'll just probably pull it up since I got this going. Um, it's all about that brotherhood, you know. It's all about that brotherhood. See another one. Whoa, that one's pretty big. Maybe we'll just pull this one up <laughs> like that. Another in Brotherhood, I'm sure you see that. And we got another one. Another in Brotherhood in black and white. And with, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm, I'm sure not every single person is in on it, but I'm guaranteeing you most of them are in on it. I mean, they get paid millions and millions of dollars, so, you know, they're getting paid that kind of money, you're getting to live such a lavish lifestyle, I mean, you know, why not do what they say? And, and most of these athletes, I don't know if all of them, but most of them usually typically end up being in parts of, they end up being in fraternities. You know, when they're in college. 
you know, joining these fraternal organizations is, is very commonplace. And I'm even going to show that with some so-called pastors as well, how they'll be in, in these fraternities and they'll be supporting and pushing and promoting this. But also let me see if this video from uh, when they were singing during the Super Bowl. I'm going to play this for you. Should play. The bone bound in majesties above the fruit and play on America. America. And notice they're wearing black and white. God shed his grace on me. Shed his grace and crown thy good. With brotherhood and sisterhood. Oh, that 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 got a rise out of them. Look at that. Look at that. That's right. That's all I wanted to show there, though. How they brought up the whole brotherhood and sisterhood, and everyone got all cheerful about it. Yay! So again, we just got more uh, Freemasonry being promoted. I got my brother-in-law texting me talking about Patriots win, largest comeback in Super Bowl history. He's a Bears fan, I think, but uh, anyways, <laughs> I hope he's joking. So, kind of laying the framework and the groundwork of how all this ties together that the phoenix rising how it all ties in with masonry and masonry at the highest levels they know they know and they have to denounce the name of jesus christ within freemasonry see let me give, give you just kind of quick history if you're not familiar with freemasonry but in freemasonry to become a freemason you have to have a belief in a god atheists cannot become freemasons so you have to believe in a God to be a Freemason. Now, if you believe in Muhammad or Krishna, or, you know, Buddha, Jesus Christ, no matter who it is, as long as you believe, you can become a Mason. And in Freemasonry, within Freemasonry, excuse me, um, Within Freemasonry, again, at the highest levels, you have to denounce Jesus Christ. And even within Freemasonry, when they do their prayers and so on and so forth, you can't do it in Jesus' name. You can never get, like, exclusive, so to speak. So, in other words, with Freemasonry, Freemasonry promotes the one world ecumenical religion. They promote that one world coming together. And we've seen uh, tonight... Well, I mean, if you watch the Super Bowl, I didn't watch it, but of course there's been plenty of people reporting on all of this that um, Pope Francis, El Papi, he gave his little uh, spiel, you could say, at the beginning of the show. And if I can pull it, I have it on my phone, but I'm going to see if I can pull it up here. Because I'm sure it's been highly, highly sought after footage as some call him father or your holiness which Lord rebuke both of those terms because he's neither and um, I think this is it right here several people did videos on it already but <clears throat> sorry for this Los Son sumamente simbólicos. 
lo que demuestra que es posible construir una cultura del encuentro y un mundo de paz. Al participar del deporte somos capaces de ir más allá del propio interés personal y de una manera saludable aprendemos a sacrificarnos, a crecer en fidelidad y en el respeto a las reglas. Que el Super Bowl de hoy, de este año, sea un símbolo de paz, de amistad, de solidaridad para todo el mundo. Oh. Gracias. So, that was Pope Francis's word, his message, you know, just showing his uh, coming together and his love and acceptance of uh, the super veil, the superb owl. Uh, Catholics, from just from, from me knowing about Catholics and Catholicism, they're huge. They're huge into this stuff. I mean, they're pagans. You can't tell the difference between a, a, a Catholic and a worldly person. They just sprinkle a little Jesus in there, but they love their sports. They love their NFL. You know, they love their beer. You know, they love they, they love their Hollywood movies. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a good friend back when I lived in Peoria, Illinois, and he was his family was Catholic, and he was just all about me. He was, yeah, I guarantee he was watching this game and just all into it. And you know, he's probably all over. He was probably all over Instagram calling, you know, the Falcons trash and calling Tom Brady a bum. I mean, it's just typical, you know, on Facebook, whatever. But this is just typical. This is the typical you know, uh, way of being, you could say, for those who have this type of uh, mindset, this Catholicism, and, and, and even this lukewarm form of Christianity in America, it does not, it does not preach separation from the world unto God. That's what's missing. There's no separation anymore. Nobody wants to separate. And we've seen that when we go out and preach in the streets, when me and Brother Adam were preaching at the Falcon Saints game and especially at the NFC Championship game when Brother Michael was with us. You know, we we seen all these people claiming Christianity. I had a lady come up to my face, you know, and she's claiming Christianity and she says she goes to Eddie Long's church. And, you know, I rebuked her about Eddie Long and that he's a pedophile. And then she claimed that, you know, oh, you know, he, he, he molested one of my, my, he molested my son and, he, you know, he repented and this, that, and the other. And, um, and, and, you know, God sees nothing wrong with sports and NFL and it's just like, you know, everyone keeps coming with their opinion, but there's nowhere in this where it, where it promotes God. And people can say, oh, well, look at, look at Lady Gaga's halftime performance. She was talking about the Lord and God. Yeah, she's talking about her God, Baal, while she's running around naked. She's running around naked. That's naked. I don't. People think, oh, they're showing their butt and their and their vagina and their and their boobs. That's naked. No, she was naked. She was biblically naked in the eyes of God. I don't care about man's definition. I care about God's definition of words. And in God's definition, she was naked. Which is no different than Beyonce last year and so on and so forth. Janet Jackson and. They all are ways are naked. They're a bunch of whores. They're a bunch of Jezebels. And they know what they're doing. And, and we see this promotion, this promotion, all this coming together, this, this one world religion. That's what it's all about, that brotherhood. You know, strength and brotherhood. Let me see if I can... I mean, it's, it's ecumenism, it's an ecumenical movement. It's promoted hardcore. This is what's being promoted on the scene, you know. Um, I, I've showed this image before in videos, but this is pretty, pretty self-explanatory of what Freemasonry is all about. See, within Freemasonry, you can be Christian, you can be Muslim. I don't know what some of these are. <laughs> You know, you can be Hindu, you can be uh, a quote-unquote Jew. You can be any of these to be a Mason. 
but you have you have to believe in a god and that's because they're pushing you towards that god lucifer freemasonry which it, you know freemasonry in a sense is witchcraft and witchcraft freemasonry ecumenism it's all part of the one world religion the one world movement that religion of of the antichrist setting people up for that beast system and I want to definitely get some scriptures out in this just to kind of prove a point um, and a few other things I want to mention uh, before I start getting to the Instagram portion of this because this is going a little bit longer than I anticipated Now, this scripture is several times in the Bible. I believe it's in the Gospels, it's in Psalms, and it's also in the book of Acts. So we'll just start in the Old Testament. Praise God, I took right to the book of Psalms, Psalm 51, to kind of go against Super Bowl 51. But... It says in the book of Psalm 118 and verse 22, the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. And we know the cornerstone is Jesus Christ. And the builders, when, I, when you translate the word builders back in the strongest concordance, it can also be masons. So honestly, I personally believe from my studying the word that masonry actually yes did exist prior to the modern form of Freemasonry again the stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner and this stone this rock that they refuse is Jesus Christ Matthew 21 42 It says, And Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. reference here in Isaiah 28 16 therefore thus saith the Lord God behold I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste Whew. it is a sure foundation this cornerstone that cornerstone being Christ not the capstone as it says in the NIV because we know the capstone is Lucifer the capstone on the back of the dollar bill the all-seeing eye, the capstone to the pyramid, but the cornerstone, that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I know there's a couple other, there's a couple other uh, scripture references to this. I believe Luke, is it Luke or Mark or both have it as well. Surprisingly, I didn't cross-reference it in my Bible, because typically it does. But I know it's also in Acts 4.11. So while I look for those, we'll read Acts 4.11. 
and it says, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which became the head of the corner. Amen. And then just to read this verse because it goes along. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So to uh, contradict to contradict what it says or what it says in Freemasonry there is no other name but Christ, Christ Jesus. He is that other name. He is the only name. No other name. So, Confucianism, Zoroastrianism, Islam, Catholicism, Buddhism, Mormonism, Jehovah, Jehovah Witnessism, and any other of these isms, any of these other Satanism, any of these Luciferianism, any of these other false religions, and their gods, despite what Freemasonry says, despite what the uh, coexist movement says, Judaism, none of them, none of those, none of those paths lead to the Lord. Only Jesus Christ. He is the head of the cornerstone. He is that sure foundation. And there is no other name but His name. But we see that Freemasonry is really promoted, um, even undercover, in, in these mainstream traditions, in these mainstream traditions of men, like the Super Bowl, like the sports franchises, like college, and, and fraternities, and sororities, it's all promoted. And it's promoted heavily. As a matter of fact, I got my other computer here. I have a, I have a program, uh, an application you could say. Uh, it's called... It's a pretty good program. And I recommend you getting it if you have space on your computer, but it's called the King James Bible Pure Bible Search. It's a free program. Uh, I don't agree with everything in, the, in regards to this pastor, but Pastor Mike Hoggard, he's the one, um, he, he, he's essentially the one who put it together. Obviously he has a team that put it together for him, but this is uh, what he offers. And it's a great way to find certain scriptures. It's a great way to, to really study your word out in a quick, in a quick manner. Like if you're looking for words and looking for how many times a particular word is used or a particular, excuse me, particular phrase is used in the word of God, um, this program is definitely great for that. Um, let's see. Mark 12.10. Mark 12.10 says, And have ye not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? So we see it in the book of Mark as well. And I'm almost positive it's in Luke. But I could be wrong. not in the book of John. And here it is in Luke. Luke 20, 17. Interesting. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that it is written, The stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner. Verse 18. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. So when we fall upon the Lord and we come before the Lord in brokenness, in humbleness, he 
He, he, we allow Him to break us. That's, that's what it's all about. We allow the Lord to break us. But if He has to fall upon you, He's going to grind you to powder and you're going to be tossed in the lake, which burneth forever. So I just wanted to throw that scripture on there as well because it goes along with it. Um, but we definitely have to go before the Lord broken. And we definitely have to go before the Lord in, in humbleness and humility. And I'm just very thankful... I'm very thankful for uh, for everything that the Lord has shown and everything that the Lord keeps showing um, with His scriptures and how it relates in modern times and how everything everything that they uh, all these different mottos and all these different I mean. They, they steal everything from the Word of God. Let's just keep it real. They steal everything from the Word of God. And I'm going to show that here next with my next set of scriptures. That being um, with the whole rise up and the whole phoenix as I, as I move off into that. But let me just pull up Malachi. And if you have your Bibles, we're just going to turn this into a Bible study. Praise God. The book of Malachi. Book of Malachi. In chapter 4. And, and, and I will say for people who if you ever have a hard time studying your word just get that understanding that with the Word of God, when you really start studying it, you'll see and, and you really look at what's going on in the world and you allow the Lord to transform and renew your mind. You'll really have a whole new understanding of the Word of God and how it relates to the times we live in now and how they steal everything from, everything from the Lord of God. Check this out in Malachi 4. Malachi 4, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Let me just pull this up on here. I'm using my uh, Bible app, but you guys can't see that, so I really want you to see this. Really, really, really want you to see this. Okay, none of these are King James. So, first do this. This one's always good. You gotta love this sight. So again, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, all the proud, all the proud, not some of the proud, all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise. The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So the Son of Righteousness, the Son of Righteousness is Jesus, and he's going to arise with healing in his wings. There is healing. There is healing in the wings of the Lord. Not in a phoenix. 
not in a falcon. There's no healing in the wings of a phoenix or a falcon. Verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow. So we, hear, we see here, we got the son of righteousness that has healing in his wings, and we see that the, there's going to be ashes under the soles of your feet. Now, those that push and promote this whole Phoenix nonsense, they could say, oh, you know, see, this is, this is talking about the Phoenix rising. No, it's not. This isn't talking about that Antichrist rising and seeing that's what people need to prepare themselves for. Because with all this chaos that's going on in the world, all this, all this speculation and all this chaos and rioting, they're, they're trying to create what's called order wab cow, which is order out of chaos. Order out of chaos so they can form a new world order. So the phoenix can rise from the ashes. That phoenix. Who's that phoenix? The Antichrist. The Antichrist. So that Antichrist can rise from the ashes. Lucifer can rise from the ashes. The beast will rise up. He's going to rise up out of the sea. Something to really think about. Again, they like to use, they like to take the Bible and twist it. Another scripture. Really good scripture. 2 Peter 2, 119. Let's see. Got to be a quicker way to do this. Second uh, Peter one nineteen. I'm trying to do this where it shows in the picture. I'm not sure why it's not now, but. Get out of here. Gotta make sure it's King James. All right. Second Peter two. James, please. All right. Second Peter one nineteen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise, arise in your hearts. This is what we want arising. We don't want the Kundalini rising. We don't want the Phoenix rising. We want the day star to rise. We want that sun of righteousness to arise. Let's see. Some other scriptures here. We've got all sorts of scriptures for you. Because ultimately, that's, that's the goal. we got to keep it Bible. You know, I can show all these pictures, talk about this, talk about that, but let's 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 keep scripture in as much as possible in all this. Not sure why I have that written down. I think I wrote the wrong one down. <laughs> on some of this. Psalm 
Psalm 139. This is a good one. Really good one for you. Let's see. I think I can shut this off. I don't need uh, that anymore. Looks like somebody unsubscribed to me. I must have made somebody mad by posting this most recent video. So, where was I at? This can go. I clear up some of this stuff here. Okay. Psalm 139. I haven't forgot. This is a really good one, too. And we're going to start at... Verse 19, I think it's a good place to start. And it says, Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. Verse 20, For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Verse 21, do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Hmm. Agree with those that rise up against thee. Hmm. All this rising up, what are they really rising up? They're rising up against God. And we've seen that. Just for instance, in the Atlanta area today, with all these different churches canceling service, they canceled service for a, a lousy football game. And guess what? That's what they get. They get their little precious falcon salutes. That's what you get. Because your God is not the God of the Bible. Your God is Baal. You worship Baal. You're going to cancel a soak. Uh, I don't even want to call it a church. Just synagogue's of Satan. But you want to cancel a church service for a stupid football game? And that's why all your little churches are going to be put on blast in this video, too. Causing that wickedness, man. Causing people to stumble. Quit playing. Verse 22. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Oh, hatred, huh? With perfect hatred. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. That was a great prayer from uh, King David. And we see how they like to rise up against the Lord. They're all about rising up against the Lord. Let's see, what else do we have here? What's another good one? Um, oh, oh, back to back to Psalms. And let's see. Psalm 3 1. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. And for true Bible-believing Christians, that's what's going to happen. You know, Jesus tells us in his word, they're not going to like you. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate you for his name's sake. So if you're loved by the world, if you're loved by the world, yeah, if you're loved by the world, Dewey Smith, 
Yes, we had Dewey Smith's video supporting homosexuality in so many words and making a mockery out of God's word. Now, I might include that in this or make a separate video on that, exposing that wicked devil. But in his word, you know, in, in, in so many words, basically condemning Christians and uplifting homosexuality and, 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 and saying, well, you eat shrimp? You eat lobster? You wear uh, 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 mixed linens? If you do, you better not say nothing about homosexuality. He, he's trying to compare dietary laws and ceremonial laws with moral laws. You can't do that. The moral law still applies. But those ceremonial and, and, and those dietary laws, those apply to Jews. Those apply to the Levitical priesthood. Those don't apply to us. I'm not a Levitical priest. But guess what? I have to be obedient. And the moral law of God, it still applies. Hey, 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 Dewey, this is in Leviticus. Can we prostitute our daughters? Is it okay now to prostitute our daughters? Because in Leviticus, it says to not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. Leviticus 19.29. But since that's Leviticus, I guess it doesn't apply anymore, right? Makes you wonder. And, and, and my point for bringing this up about him was that the Young Turks, the YouTube channel, news station, whatever you want to call them, the Young Turks, they got over 3 million subscribers, they posted this video on their channel talking about how they like this guy. They're like, man, I don't agree with his beliefs, but I like what he's saying. He, he's the best Christian I've ever seen. They love him. They love this guy. And why is that? Because he's not preaching the true gospel. A little leaven leaven at the whole lump. That's what it says in the Word of God. And these guys, they're going to come, and they're going to come with all this ear tickling message and telling half truths. But that little leaven is going to leaven at the whole lump. What else do we have for Scripture? Let's see. We got Psalm 44 and verse 5. Might take me a little bit to get there. Ah, oh, man. I'm not sure how to do this to where it keeps the image up. No, 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 no. So bear with me. Probably be easier just to do a search. I think I'm gonna do that. It'd be easier just to do a search. Psalm 44 and 5, King James. And this is what we got. It says, Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through who? Through God will we push down our enemies. Through thy name, through his name, will we tread them under that rise up against us. So through his name, we're going to tread them under. And in the word of God, it says that, that Jesus Christ gave us power and authority to tread on serpents and on scorpions. So all that don't tread on me, hey, guess what? Jesus Christ gave us the authority to tread on serpents. And we're going to tread them under that rise up against us. Hallelujah. And Psalm 59 and verse 1. What does it say? It says... Here we go with this again. All right. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God, and defend me from them that rise up against me. And he is going to defend us. He is our defender. He is our defense. 
He is our wall. We don't need Donald Trump to build a wall. God is our wall. Amen. Ephesians 5, 14. Alright, Ephesians 5.14, this is what it says. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Christ is that light bearer, not Lucifer. He's a false light. Christ is the one that gives us light. He's the one that rises us up. Because he rose up on the third day. He was resurrected. Not the phoenix, but Christ. Christ was resurrected from the dead on that third day. When he conquered death, he conquered sin. Hallelujah. Acts 22.16 Sorry, a lot of this I'm doing on the fly. But God bless you for having patience with me. Acts 22, 16. And now, why tear you, thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Wash away thy sins. Amen. We're going to call on the name of the Lord and we're going to believe wholeheartedly in what he did and why he came and why he is our Savior. He saves us from our sins. And when we get baptized, when we get baptized by our, by our Lord and Savior, and we're baptized in his name, when we arise, when we arise from that baptism, we're made new. We're made new in Christ Jesus. All things become new and old things are passed away. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 24 and 24. Well, actually, before I, before I get to that, because that's going to pretty much segue into the second half of this. Just a little more gematria again. I don't do the whole gematria thing, but I did find this extremely interesting that rise up in gematria, in Jewish, in English, and in simple, all equal the exact same as Jesus or how it's spelled in the Greek, I-E-S-O-U-S -S or I-O-S-E-U-S. -S -E they all equal the same thing. Rise up and Jesus in, Ju in the Jewish gematria is 444. In the English gematria, they are both 528. And in simple gematria, they are both 88. That's very, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> so, with all that said, with all that said, uh, one other thing, this is just another quick note about the rise up, whatever, whatever, whatever about it, but there's a rock band called The Devil Wears Prada, and they actually, at the end of this past year, wrapped up what is called the Rise Up Tour. And just a little quick tidbit note, on October 23rd, 23, and also 10 plus 23 is 33, but on October 23rd, 2016, they performed their Rise Up Tour at the Masquerade in Atlanta. 
Very interesting note, that was actually the first place that me and Brother Adam preached together at, actually open air preached, was at the masquerade with Cradle of Filth. So yes, the devil wears Prada, rise up to her. Interesting. So again, with all that said, uh, we're going to segue into the next part here. And with that, I'm going to actually switch out batteries because this may run a little bit longer. So. God bless and see you in the second part.